we're wrong. Right, question six. A particle P moves in a straight line on a horizontal surface, passes through a fixed point of the line with velocity 2. At time t seconds after passing it, its acceleration is that value that's given there. So we've got acceleration is 4 plus 12t. Calculate the velocity of p when t is 3. We know that the velocity, you know we've, we've got this kind of continuous thing where you go from displacement, differentiate to velocity, differentiate to acceleration. So we integrate the acceleration to get back to the velocity. So we need to integrate 4 plus 12t. We've only just started doing the integration, but 4 integrates to 4t. 12 you add 1 to the power, divide by the new power, so that's 12 t squared over 2, so 6 t squared, and we have to put in our constant of integration. And that becomes important now because the question said when, when it passed through that point, the velocity was 2. So if t equals 0, v equals 2. So 2 is 4 times 0 plus 6 times 0 plus c. So we get c is 2 out of that. So the velocity is given by this equation. Now, what was the question wanting? Find the, find the velocity of p when t is 3. So if t equals 3, v is 4 threes plus 6 times 3 squared plus 2, so 12 plus some other amount, 54 plus 2. Is that right? I get 68. I do get 68. 68 metres per second. There we go. OK, notice that the C is really important because if you've got C missing, then you end up too short for that and then you get 66. And that was the, the most common wrong answer. Part 2. Find the distance OP when T is 3. All right, so if that was the velocity, the distance is what we get if we integrate the velocity. So we integrate 4t plus 6t squared plus 2 dt, which gives us, uh, add one to the power divided by the new power, 4t squared over 2, so 2t squared, 6t cubed over 3, so 2t cubed, 2t, and we need another constant of integration, which I probably should have used a different letter, but I haven't, that's, that's quite bad, isn't it? Um, call it something else. I'll use a different letter. There we are. So we've got uh, another constant of integration in there. But we were told that we started counting when it passed this point. And so, actually, when t was zero, it was at the origin. So if t was zero, x equals zero... Therefore, this new constant of integration that I just introduced is also zero. And so we're left with x as being 2t squared plus 2t cubed plus 2t plus zero. Sorry, so plus 2t. And we wanted to know what happened when t was 3. If t equals 3, we've got x is 2 times 3 squared. There's 2 times 3 cubed, plus 2 threes. So that's, what, 18 plus 54 plus another 6. So that's 78, it is 78 metres. There we are. OK. And uh, part 3 then said, a second particle Q having the same mass as P moves along the same straight line. The displacement of Q from O is that. So now we're starting with the X equation, where K is constant. When T is 3, the particles coalide and coalesce. Find the value of K. Well, actually, we, we know stuff about this, don't we? Um, we know that when T is 3... That's when they call us. We know that the distance of, of Q, the distance of the first particle, P, is 78. So the distance of Q must be 78 as well. So when T equals 3, we've got 
that k minus 2 times 3 cubed must be equal to 78. Because the distance of q must be the same as the distance of p, because they collide at that point. So that is k minus 54 is 78, so k is 132. Then we have the value of k. That was quite nice. Find the common velocity of the particles immediately after their collision. So they, so they coalesce. Okay. So let's start thinking about some before and after stuff. Because we've now got, we're into momentum stuff now, aren't we? It's turned from being a, a calculus question into a momentum question. If we think of P beforehand, just before the collision, the velocity of P we found earlier as being 68. Now let's consider what's happening to Q. This is before the collision. It had a displacement of 132 minus 2t cubed. So the velocity of q is what you get if you differentiate that, which is minus 6t squared. And when t was 3, The velocity of q is minus 6 times 3 squared, so minus 54 metres per second. Now I like when I do these momentum equations, I like my little diagrams. So here's my before diagram. I've now got, these both have mass of m. I've got a velocity of 68, and this one has a velocity of 54 minus 54, speed in the opposite direction. After the particles coalesce, so this mass is now 2m, because they're joined together, and there is a velocity of v, and it must be in that direction because the speed of q was, the speed of p was greater than the speed of q. So let's do my momentum equation, my conservation of momentum equation now I've got uh, m times 68 plus m times minus 54 is 2m times v. m is a common factor all the way through, so divide by m. This leaves me with 14 as being 2v, so v is 7 metres per second. And I don't think we needed to particularly talk about direction when we, oh no, well, the yeah, common velocity of the particles immediately after the collision. I don't know, maybe it's there in our diagram, isn't it? Maybe to be absolutely thorough, we should say um, 7 metres per second in the direction P was moving. There we go. And that's question six.